I'm talking about today. The part two of my message about being immovable. And without Christ's love, you, you, you cannot be immovable. You'll be tossed back and forth, not here and there. What sustains us and make us a rock is the love of Christ, not the love of your mother. You better hope your mother have the love of Christ. Because with a mother that loves Christ, my God, my God. Oh, my Lord. I want to read to recap last week and then we're going to get right moving forward. Amen. Turn me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 and 58. And if you remember, I read out of two versions. What was the two versions? New King James Version. What was the other one? The NIV. So we're going to start off the NIV then go right in New King James Version. I want you to hear both versions. Amen. It simply says, but thanks be to God. It has an explanation, explanation point there. Mine does it yours. So it's from something that we, thanks be to God. He gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. That was the NIV. Now listen to the New King James Version. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God gave us victory through Jesus Christ, the Bible says. That was the first, first verse says that. What's the victory we got in Jesus Christ? Salvation. salvation. And, and, and what, what gives us salvation? The blood of Christ and him dying for our sins. And the victory is that we can overcome. Jesus has overcome the sins of the world. And so he died for us. And so therefore, sins no longer reigns in our lives with Jesus Christ. But without Christ, sins dominates our lives. So the victory is through who? Jesus Christ. Through Christ, we no longer are submitted to Satan's schemes. We live for Christ. That's the victory that our society misses out on. It, stand fast means standing firm or fixed on Jesus. Immovable means firmly fixed. And I will not do without. I will not do without Christ. Most of us cannot even imagine being without our mothers. But you need to multiply that sin. I cannot imagine being without Christ. I can't imagine it. I can't comprehend it. I don't even want to try it. We've got to understand that. We've got to wrap our minds around that. I love our mothers. We're going to honor them all the days of our lives. But we need to love God and honor Him all the days of our lives. All the days. He's the one give us the mothers. And without him, there is no hope. Let nothing move us. It's the title of my message, part two this morning. I want to read again at 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, right next door. I want to read both versions, New King James Version this time. Watch, stand fast in the faith. Be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. NIV says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, do everything in love. Brothers and sisters, we must be brave. We must not let Satan make us timid and cowards and give in to all his schemes. We must not allow that in our lives anymore. We must not allow Satan to move us and toss us back and forth anymore. We must gain these convictions individually. We can't gain them. It's great to have them as a group, but you gotta have them when you're alone and nobody else is around. When nobody's around and you think that, that nobody sees you, you gotta have these convictions. Be strong. Be courageous. We gotta be immovable. The NLT says, be strong and move a work enthusiastically. 
Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Oh, right. Amen. Gotta, nothing we do for the Lord is ever useless. That's right. It's always for the good. And God will always bless it. In every opportunity, every chance he get. I want to read a couple verses with you. Turn me to Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Romans, just before I get into part two, let's read a couple more. I want to give you Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. So we got to stay in Jesus. But I love to say thanks be to God who delivers us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at Romans 8 37. Romans 8 37 knowing all these things we are more than conquerors through him who love us see there's victory through Jesus we become more than conquerors there's nothing we can't overcome with Jesus Christ right. it is Jesus that makes us strong we need Jesus it is Jesus that we're off at school by ourselves that if you have him you can make it so each one has got to develop a deep conviction about that, that no matter where you at at a time, if G you have Jesus, you're going to be okay. Right. It's when you move away from Christ and you get around the wrong people who pulling you to do things you ain't got no business doing, you're in trouble. Yes. Even as marrieds, we got to be careful who we surround ourselves with. Are you surrounding yourself with people who believe that we have victory through Jesus Christ? That's right. Who do you surround yourself with? Because you can surround yourself with the wrong people who will take you and you'll catch yourself pulling, pulling away, pulling back and not participating in the victory of Jesus Christ. Don't let that happen to you. Singles, who do you surround yourself with? I think about my son in D.C. He told me the other day, he said, Dad, I've got to develop more friends while I'm here. You're right, son. <laughs> he said, because you can only make it so far, been on your own, driving an hour to Bible talk, an hour to church, one way, two hour round trip, driving, and then you think, sometimes people think, oh, it's so great out here. He, he is now missing where he was. Because everywhere is not as cool and great as you think it is. The grass is not always greener on the other side. So he said, now I've got to stand on my two feet. Of what you guys have taught me. Because without anybody listen, he got to be motivated to drive one hour, one way to go to Bible talk. Well, you got, sometimes you, when you got up, he had to leave at his house at 7 o'clock to make it to church this morning. Leaving. He's got to stand his own two feet. He's got to remember what he's been taught. Satan, every day is telling him, oh man, that's too far, man. It's okay, just chill out. Ain't nobody going to know. Which is a lie, because I'm going to talk to him every Sunday. Nobody going to know. You can just shut over sleep. You're tired. Come on, man. His new job now, through the week, you have to work the 2 to 11 shift, 3 to 11. It goes back and forth. But yet he has not missed Bible talk or church since he's been gone. He's trying to be immovable in Christ. He's trying to be brave and courageous in the Lord. I want to share with you now in part two, my first point. I only have two points this morning. To become immovable in Christ and to remain in Christ, we must separate ourselves from this world. Hear me now. To become immovable in Christ and to remain in Christ, we must separate ourselves from this world. Amen. You won't believe how many times your mom through your life tried to help you separate yourself from the craziness of this world. Right. You don't need to be going over there. You don't need to be doing that. You got to be smarter than that. I remember when Michael, when, when Michael started going on his own, I used to tell Michael, okay, son, I'll make something clear to you. It ain't wise to go make babies. Here goes everybody else making babies. That don't mean you're supposed to go make babies. Don't I, I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go down that road, son. Because I promise you, I'll give you my word. If you do, I'm going to love you. But when you bring that baby home, I'm going to kiss you and that baby. 
give y'all something to eat and then show you the door. Amen. You're going to get a job and you're going to take care of that family. Amen. You, you, you're not going to create babies for me to take care of them. Amen. Now, I know your me and your mama love you to death, but you're talking about going to school, getting your PhD. Okay, it's going to be on hold because you're going to have to go get a job and take care of that family. I'm not in the business of, what's the word you use when you hinder people? There you go. Look at the church. I'm not in the business. Of, I'm not an enabler. I'm not going to enable you. I'm going to love you, but you're going to have to take on the responsibility. Now, if you love Jesus, you won't have to worry about this. But if you're talking about I slipped up, okay, you better slip up and go get a job. Go get two of them because you're going to need them. Because you're going to need a place to stay. Because grandma and papa are supposed to move in and get, you know, you come and stay with you. I'm here for emergency. That ain't a 911 situation. You create a situation you're going to have to take care of. That's right. So y'all better be serious about talking to your children about, okay, we're trying to teach them to be immovable. But they, some will make bad decisions because they'll follow the wrong decisions. Well, there needs to be consequences to the decisions they make. That's right. Consequences. Absolutely. But if you hold on to Christ, I promise you, you won't have to worry about them kind of consequences. That's right. God's got a plan. Yes. It's a glorious plan. Yes. In fact, let me read it to you. Uh, let me tell you. Go to, let's see if anybody. Now, where would I go to read God's glorious plan? Oh, look. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. I didn't even tell. Who said it, Patrice? Who said a lot of people? I didn't even tell. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah what? Oh. Oh, look at the church. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 20. So go to Jeremiah 29. When we get Jeremiah 29, then I'm going to ask you, what verse was, should we go to? Oh, look. Oh, oh, verse 11. Now, why are we going to Jeremiah 29, verse 11? Wait, wait a minute. What, what's Simone? I need a microphone for Simone. What? What? What's Simone? Now, why are we going to Jeremiah 29, 11? God has a plan to prosper. His plan is to prosper you. Lord Jesus, I don't think everybody heard that. I got a turn. Give me this mic. Don't turn the thing on. Oh, we got it. Oh, where, where's my where's my table? It's on. Now, what is God plan again? To prosper us and not to harm us. Oh my goodness. God has a plan to prosper us and not to harm us. And then what he says after that? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. I just want to make sure y'all, I'm not the only one knows this stuff. To do what after that? He's going to give us a hope and a future. Give us a hope yes. and a future. Yeah, oh my God. And then what do you say after that? What do you say after that? Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You will do what now? When you seek me and with all your heart, you will find me. You will seek me with all your heart and then you will find me. And then when you find him, what happens? What do you say after that? Bring you back from what? <laughs> What's been ca what captive you? Sin. sin. God says you. That, what, what sets us free from the sin? Jesus. Okay, it's time to go home. That's a drag the mob. Y'all already got it all figured out. You got it all figured out. You you all you got it. So let's read it in, entirely. Let, let's just read it now. Now that we 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 see what God plan is, let's read it. It says Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. But Satan wants you to believe. Hey. Hey, hey, you, God's trying to harm you. You can go sleep with everybody who you want to sleep with. God's trying to harm you. You ain't, you ain't got to really obey. See, you'll feel better if you disobey. Say, so try to feed you lies. God says, the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. Somebody forgot to say that. Yes, Kiki said it. Yes, See, I ain't hear you that, Kiki. That, how you forget this? Get the mic over. Y'all lost y'all mind up here. Y'all have lost y'all mind. What happens? Kiki, you got to tell them what happens when you call and pray to them. What, 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 what happens? Tell them what happened. <laughs> we'll call upon him and pray to him and he will listen. He listens. He listens. If God listens to you, why won't you pray to him? But you got to make sure you've been righteous. You can't go, I'm going to do what I want to do and pray to God and get what I want. You know that little manipulating game we try to play with our parents? Have y'all tried to, have you have y'all lied to your parents and try to manipulate them? I know I have. I have lied many times. Yeah, you, oh, you just a couple times? Oh, somebody just, somebody just lied in church. 
Talking about he lied a couple of times. <laughs> Talking about just a little bit, just a little. No, all you liars, all liars, raise a hand. Hey, ho, that's us. <laughs> But see, <laughs> every hand went up. Okay, you go ahead and put yours down, Marine. Go ahead and put it down. Go ahead and put it down. He just wants y'all make sure y'all see me, man. I lied so many times, oh Jesus. But God says, man, I got a plan. He says, so when you repent, I'll listen to you. I'll listen. He wants to prosper, not to harm us. He gives us a hope in the future. It blows my mind. We don't believe in the hope in the future my God has for us. He got something to give you beyond will blow your mind. And we so easily doubt we got to go find our own man, our own woman. We got to date people who ain't Christians because we don't believe God can do it. You got to be kidding me. My God is bigger than all of that. You ever heard he's all that in a bag of chips? Well, God bigger than all that in a bag of chips. He's bigger than that and you got to believe it. But we got to come to him. We got to let God give us his plan. Amen. Plan to prosper, not to harm you. But to get, listen, to become immovable, immovable in Christ, we must remain in Christ. We must separate ourselves from this world. To gain those things, you cannot be of the world. You got to get rid of lying and cheating and deceitfulness. Yes. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. I'm going to show it to you. We cannot be of this world. And my God will bless us beyond your imagination. Amen. We can't let this world move us. We got to stop allowing the little short, feel-good moments dictate our lives. Amen. It's not worth it. Amen. I'm praising God. I feel like every day, my daughter Brittany is not perfect but she's growing up she's maturing in the Lord and, and it brings peace to me the more she grows in the Lord because that means she's going to make better decisions Amen. I used to be concerned like man somebody smile at Brittany I wonder what she's thinking now I don't concern myself as much anymore Amen. she's maturing and growing Amen. she's been tested see we're all going to be tested yes. And through testing, you mature. Because sometimes we bite the wrong apple. And then we have to spit it out. And realize, oops, wrong way. Gotta go the other way. Give me the good apple. Look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in, this, in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from this world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. God says, man, don't get caught up in this world. Don't let this world pull you in. By, we, by not loving this world, you'll learn to be immovable, immovable in Christ. Don't love the things of the world. Learn to love the things of God. By not loving cars and loving relationships and having careers and, and, and want to get a husband. Learning that those things God will give you accordingly. But learning to love God above all those things, then God can give you what you need. And I'm telling you, you want, you want God to give you things. You don't want to go get those things. Because if you go get those things, you're going to turn them back in. You're going to get the wrong man. You're going you're gonna to turn, you're gonna cash him in. You be like, I want out of this mess. So yeah, you want a refund. You want you, 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 and God they call a do over. You want a do over because you went and hooked up with the wrong one. So you got to let God give you the one. You ever seen that movie called The One? It's, it's, it's a little karate movie by Jet Li, The One. But it's pretty cool because you got to be the one. Listen, you want God to let you become find the one. Because the one they thought they had was the wrong one. Jet Li was like, that ain't me. He's a fake one. You don't want to get one and go, well, wait a minute, time out. Now, when we were dating, you was one way. And now we married, you are another way. He ain't the one. But when you find the one that's a Christian, they don't flip-flop on you. They don't change with the wind. They're the same. What they do, they start growing spiritually. You've got to gain these convictions. Do not want this of the world. The things of the world. 
You want to be immovable, immovable in Christ? Stay away from the world. Don't be attracted to the things of the world. We must learn how to always do God's will. To be immovable in Christ, we got it. Listen to what it says in verse 17. The world and his desires pass away, but whoever, 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 whoever does the will of God, does what? What happens to those who do the will of God? But y'all don't say that not confidently at all. They live forever. Are you kidding me? They do the will of God. They live forever. Forever, ever? Ever, ever, ever? Ever. Ever, ever. <laughs> you ain't gonna ever more than me, ever. <laughs> they just live forever, ever. So why ever, ever? <laughs> that I wouldn't do the will of God so I can live for how long? Ever. Come on, ever, ever. That's what we want to do. Do you not want to be with God forever? Yes. How long? Ever, ever, ever what? Ever. But we got to learn to do the will of God. Are you doing the will of God? What are you doing? The question is, every day of your life, are you doing the will of God? You got to ask yourself daily. Today as I walk this path, who will am I doing? Is it God's will or my will? When it's your will, it's not of God's will. Satan will play a tricky game with you. He'll try to make you want to do your will more than God's will. Because sometimes your will is uncomfortable. Your will be like, man, okay, it feels good, but then God's will is more uncomfortable. Yeah. And said, so God, well, this too, this seems kind of challenging, but it seems easy over here. And, and he wants you to take that wrong path. Don't do that. Don't go down the wrong path. Be willing to do the will of God forever. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 2. Listen to this. I'm talking about being immovable in Christ by separating yourself from this world. Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 2. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. See, we start thinking, man, it's so, man, it's just so hard to follow Jesus. You just, you just don't understand. Uh, that's not God's plan. That's right. For his commands to be ball and chain. That's, right. that's how people treat my God. That if you live for God, man, you just, you just don't understand, man. Lord Jesus, really? No, you just don't understand. It's not that we don't understand, you don't understand. It is not God's plans to be burdensome to you. That's right. Amen. <laughs> no, man. God wants his, his plan to be a joy. And we got to learn how to make it a joy in our lives. I love what he says here. For everyone born of God overcomes this world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So you want to overcome this world? This hatred, God says we're supposed to be overcoming the world. We're supposed to have nothing to do with the world. The only way to overcome the world is to believe in his son. Now, here's the catch. What is belief in his son? Because see, some people think, oh, all I got to do is believe. Well, belief is obedience. It says that you got to obey his commands. See, are you willing to obey God? That's why he says my commands are not burdensome. He tried to break it down to you. My commands are not burdensome. So to overcome this world, you got to love God. If you say you love God, you got to obey me. Yeah. People want to believe, all we got to do is believe in my heart. Well, no, that's a whole lot more than that. That's the beginning. But belief in your heart says that you're going to obey God. Right. Repent and be baptized. Yes. Change. Right. Be born again. Right. No longer live of this world. Yes. To be separate from the world. Yes. How many, how many of you here know me before I became a Christian? Anybody know me before I became a Christian? Raise your hand high. Oh, just one? And my mama, too. Oh. Some people say, that's a good thing. Well, I wish more you knew because then you, you appreciate the miracle you see. You understand that through obedience, through Christ, there's many sacrifices I had to make, but yet I enjoy the sacrifice that I don't no longer live of this world anymore. 
and see each and every one of us. See, what's pretty cool, some of you I knew before you became a Christian. William had to just go back to work. I knew William for years before he became a Christian. And then he becomes a Christian. It, it, it makes me appreciate God even more because I see how much he changed. See, I got to meet Deborah and her family before they became a Christian. And so you see how they live their lives. You see now, it makes you go, my God, my God. See, I knew Sonia and Sonia a little bit before they became a Christian. Through their openness. And you see them now, and it's like, oh my God. Look what my God has done. That's what it's all about. See, I knew Brittany before she became a Christian. I knew Michael before he became a Christian. Little lying rascal. I knew him. I knew him. I knew Brittany. She by the look. Brittany was that Michael was that outwardly lie. Brittany was that that quiet, deceitful lie. Michael's is vo voiceless lying. You know, he gonna tell. Yeah, I ain't do that. Yes, you did, boy. <laughs> And then, and then, yeah, you know, that's me. Yeah, you got me. Yeah, that's me. Brittany, oh, Lord Jesus, you got you to gotta play battleship with Brittany. <laughs> Brittany, that quiet, smile on your face. Daddy. And I knew certain daddy, they got that lying child of mine. Daddy, oh, Lord, what's she on done? Now you learn from your kids. And so you had to, had to, man, we had to get, teach him not to be that way. And then you have a guy, how many got more than one kid? One child. Then you got to teach your children. You know one of the major things you got to teach your kids? We had to teach. Vinny used to say all the time to Brittany Michael, don't cover each, each other's sins. Yeah. Don't lie for each other. What you used to say to them all the time? Was that it? Stop yeah, stop hiding each other's sin. Yeah. And like, we, we, we finally, we find out, Brittany, child, you did what? And then Michael in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you knew. I ain't say nothing. Don't lie. Don't do it. You got to teach your children not to do that for each other. To love. They had to learn how to hold each other accountable. But they couldn't do that until they became Christians. And then they started understanding. And now I got to teach Michael. But hold up. My, 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 and, and Brittany. But Michael sometimes be. He, boy, he be like, okay, you need to change right now. What's wrong with you? What, what you doing? Boy, if you don't be quiet, don't you want me to list your sins? <laughs> You know, he'd be like, oh, what took you so long? Really? What took you so long? Really, really? <laughs> so we gotta learn to put a plank out of our own eye. Amen. See the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye. Yeah. And all of them like to hold me accountable. <laughs> oh my Lord, Darryl, they, the whole household hold me accountable. <laughs> Everywhere I go, man. Oh, oh dad, really, daddy? <laughs> and, and, and don't, and, and Vinita loves to say, oh, preacher. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, wait a minute, I thought I was your husband. What, what preacher man, for, preacher, can we talk about this for a minute? Huh? Sure, babe, what we need to talk about. And bring the same way, dad. She did it just, what the other day you did to me? This Brittany, this just happened. tell you some sin I had to repent of just two days ago. I'm in the house, my family came home, so you gotta not be like the world. Amen. They came home, so she already know where I'm going, to my amen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna share my sin, I'm gonna come back to yours, I'm coming. <laughs> So two, just two days ago, I, I'm come home. Hey, look here. I was out trying to get some retreat stuff done. I was a little tired. I came home working on my message. Brittany, Michael, I mean, Brittany and uh, Vanita came home. And it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? It was Tuesday. Tuesday night. Before they came home. And what we do on Tuesday night, we got to get our house ready. We got to get Bible talk ready. We have about 30 people up next time, 35. We got to get the food ready. We got to get everything going and get people who's on brain food. Make sure we have that all out. And I'm in, there, in my office. And then all I heard was... Dad, she started doing a hand like this. I look out of my office. I know where my office is. I'm like, uh, can I help you? Um, can I speak to you for a minute, please? I'm like, oh Lord, this just she gonna try to be all sweet. So I, 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 what you need? Talk to me. Uh, I just want to share a few things with you. Me and Mama been working all day. <laughs> All day. In fact, I work two jobs now. We just got home and Mama came in, worked long hours, walked right in here and started cleaning. What have you done to help us get ready for Bible talk today? Man. <laughs> I mean, she said it just like that, real sweet. What, 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 what you done? I had you. That's what I did. <laughs> I have created you. What else do you need to talk about right now? Nah, man. That's what I wanted to say. 
That's what I wanted to say. I wanted to give her a piece of my mind. What have you done to me? What you done to me? And she been all kind, respectful. I say, Lord Jesus. I said, um, Brittany, that was a good point you just made, sweetie. Let me grab the vacuum cleaner. Get the vacuum. Is there anything else you need your daddy to do right about now? <laughs> Didn't it? I, okay, the dishes, let me go ahead and put these up. What up? Is there anything else? And I was thinking, my heart, let's stay holy. Because I feel like knocking a snot out of her blood. <laughs> she got me. She got me right now. But I'm going to get her later. I'm going to get her. <laughs> let, me just, let me just repent and be like Jesus. If, where's the mop? Do I need to mop up anything? Do I, she said, Daddy, Mama, in there cleaning the bathroom. Oh, Lord, she cleaned the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Let me get the bathroom. But I did, and then I got my heart right. I said, Let's, man, we man, I'm gonna do this joyfully. Because the bottom line is, she's right. Amen. She was right. And I don't want to be like the world. And I want to be a Christian. And, then boy, and, 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 and I, I was waiting on saying, I was waiting on to use that preacher thing on. She didn't use the preacher thing on me. But she did use the brother thing on me. Brother. I'm like, child, I'm your father. You don't go, but see, you're my father and you're my brother. I want to be, brother, I want to talk to you as my brother right now. Oh, Jesus. But let me just humble up. I repented and we worked at it. We got it going. We had a great time. Amen. I had to not be like the world. Amen. And the Father's world was gave Britain a piece of their mind. Yeah. But in Christ, we don't do that. We got to, guys, we must be separate from this world. Amen. We must not imitate this world, have the spirit of this world. We must be separate among them. Look what Psalms 147 says. Turn with me as I just want to read a few more scriptures with you. Turn to Psalms 147. Because we need to be thankful that we have family members that will hold you accountable. To help you make it to heaven. Psalms 147 verse 10. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor the, the, his delight in the legs of, of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. God expects us to put everything we have in him. He's not looking for warriors and strong horses and people got all the power in the world. He's looking for those to be humble enough to trust in him. That will put their hope in him. And this, as a church and as a people, we've got to learn how to do this. To be immovable in Christ, our hope needs to be in Christ. Our hope cannot be in our own ability. And on who we are and on our, what we can do. It simply needs to be in Christ. We need to humble ourselves before Christ. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Go to the New Testament. 2 Peter chapter 3. Listen to this. We read this. We're going all the way to the back in the New Testament. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 14. <coughs> so then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. My God. To be, have nothing to do with the world, we're supposed to make an effort to be what? Found what? Spotless. The Bible even says blameless. And at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brothers Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letter contain his letters contain something, some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless and fall from your secure positions, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forevermore. Amen. But we need to be growing in what? 
in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must grow, brothers and sisters. I love when it says, so, th so then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. We got to be found spotless. To be immovable, when they find us, we got to be right with God. There must not be a stain of adultery on us. There must not be a stain of lying and cheating on us. There must not be a stain on those who disrespect God on us. We got to be found spotless, Amen. blameless, and at peace with God. Amen. Some people say, well, that's, that's challenging. That's hard. Not with God. It's just simply obeying God. We make it hard. We make it more challenging. Our sinful nature, this world makes it hard. It doesn't have to be that way. Listen, we must put our hope in him. Lean on him. Be found spotless in him. This is what pleases God. And the way to do that, we got to hold on to God's words. <coughs> to become immovable in Christ and to remain in Christ, we must separate ourselves from the world. The only way you can separate yourself from the world is to be found as people who hold on to the word of God and obey it. That is the only way you can separate yourself from this world. To obey it. Most people in this world do not obey God. And we have, we have a country full of religious people who do not obey. To be found spotless, we must obey. And hold on to God's word for our lives. With everything we got. Turn with me to John 8, 31, 32. Turn now as we read. To the Jews who believe in him. There you go. Come on. Turn there. Because this is what's going to hold us to God's word. This is what's going to help us make it. Yes, Brothers and sisters, we cannot, let's don't play church. Let's be a people who hold on to God's words with our lives in hand. Yes, amen. To the Jews who believe in him, Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you hold to my teaching, we can't be a people who knows the word and don't hold to it. Amen. We got to be a people who knows it and holds to it. Amen. And won't let go. Hold on for your life. Right. Hold on like you never held on anything ever before. Amen. Give him everything you got. Yes. When challenge times come, hold on. Because they will come. Amen. When the world come on, hold on to God. Amen. Don't hold on to this world. Amen. Gain these convictions. Amen. Be immovable. Be a people that read their Bible every day. Yes. Look at Acts 17, verse 10. All right. Come on. Yeah. To become immovable in Christ, we got to remain and be separate from this world. The world doesn't read their Bible daily. The world, when they pray, they pray selfish prayers. They don't know how to pray for God to really change their lives. But we must be able to do that. Amen. Acts 17 verse 10 I know that's right It simply says As soon as, as it was night The believers sent Paul and Silas Away to Berea On arriving there they went to the Jewish synagogues Now the Bereans were of more noble character Than the Thessalonians For they received the message with great eagerness And examined the scriptures every day To see if what Paul said was true as a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. They believed. They believed. But they examined the scriptures every day. To be immovable, we cannot read every now and then. We cannot become a people who gets in the word whenever it's convenient. We got to become a people who lives and eats God's word daily. Who puts it in their heart and nobody will move them from God. And when Satan throw their arrows, it bounces off. It doesn't penetrate because you have God in your heart. This is who we got to become. And some of you want to become a Christian? Are you already reading your Bible daily? And some of you who are saying you are Christians, are you reading your Bibles daily? Amen. Or every day do you have an excuse? Come on. And Satan is eating you alive. We cannot become like that. You know, there's many things our mothers taught us through life. And I want to close with this. We'll finish up next week the rest. I hope, but we'll see. We'll stay in the word. But what is something? <clears throat> Let me
me see how many of you get this right. What is something our mothers ask us to do a lot growing up that deals with God? Uh, uh, listen, that deals with God. What were our mothers, and what did, what did you do? Uh, 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 oh, you get, oh, you get, you, 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 you nailing it. And what our moms will tell us about praying for everything, but then our moms, what did they do for us a lot? Pray and pray and pray some more. They will be praying without ceasing. We, some of us kept our mothers on their knees. Our mothers had crusted knees. My mama knees probably bent up, broke up. She got to keep them hit up. Because she was dealing with three boys and had no sense. But the oldest was the worst. So it kept her on her knees. Prayer without ceasing. Trusting in the Lord. We not only got to pray for ourselves, but we got to pray for one another. Yes. Look at what my God says here. Turn with me as we close. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 16. We're going to read the NIV, and we're going to read the New American Standard. The NIV and the New King James Version. First Thessalonians, chapter 5. Verse 16. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. And I'm, I'm turning there twice. Here we go. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to read 16 through 19. Listen to what it says here. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And do not quench the spirit. To become immo immovable in Christ and to remain in Christ, we must separate ourselves from this world by praying always. Rejoicing always. And do not quench the spirit. This will separate us, separate us from this world. Listen to the New King James Version. It simply says... Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. My question, what is quenching the spirit? What? How do you, right, put it out. Well, how do you put out God's fire? Okay, not listening to him, what else? Doing your will instead of God's will, what else? Not obeying. not obeying? What else? Huh? Say what? The company. Keep, keeping bad company. What else? Fearful. What else? Not being in the word. What else? So what done? By not praying. You know, absolutely. And how about being of the world and not being of the world and in the world? No, been both. You of the world and you in the world. You of the world and in the world. But what are you supposed to be? Of this world and not in this world. Well, in this world and not of the world. In other words, you in here, you here, but the, but the world is, the world is not of you. But the problem we do is that we in the world and the world becomes us. See, the world not needs to, the world must not become you. And so, how does the world become you? By you doing what the world does instead of what God calls you to do. Right. You look around the world, they, they live together before getting married. They, they cheat on each other. They still, so you become that. We must not become that. We must be a light to this world. Set apart from this world. We need more and more Miss Denise's, more Miss Frazier's, more Miss Pearlies who say no, no. We may be in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen. And our age won't make a difference. Amen. We need more who will say, no, I'm standing up for Christ. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to be a mother in the church and a good example to the church. I'm going to love those in the church, especially the preacher. <laughs> we need more of them. We need more. More of us. We need more Shadarans. Yeah. 
We need more Dan's and Veronica's. We need more Rosalind. We need more Melanie's. We need more Miguel's. We need more. Well, how do you get more? Using the word of God, living by the word of God and draw, let people be drawn the way how drawn to us by the way we live our lives. I tell you, it works. I'm telling you, live the life and people will be drawn to you because you're not you in this world, but you're not of this world. True story. This happened as I close. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a story. A fact. My wife had a birthday this week. I was so proud she turned 55. I ain't know what to do. I can't wait to be 55 too. That's cool, man. I can't wait. I ain't slipping in. I just put it in. I can't wait to get there too. It's pretty cool. Because I'm always saying, how old are we, honey? I'd be losing it. So we celebrating a birthday and we out together and we go uh, to this restaurant on the water because we like seafood. And I'm easily two, three hundred people there. It's packed. Just been reopened. Wouldn't let Dan sit down because we weren't there, so we had to wait. So we had to drive to about in traffic, 5:30, trying to get there. We get there, we go inside. And we get in there, we forget about everybody else around us. We focus on Vanita's birthday and thank God we're Christians. And so we just started laughing and bonding and laughing and bonding. As God is my witness, people start walking by us like this. Pack two, three hundred people. <laughs> One lady came three times. <laughs> Trying to figure out what are they drinking? Water, tea with a lemon, and somebody had a Coke. <laughs> And so she went by two, three. I said, Dan, she only been by three times. <laughs> then all of a sudden, this, I, I, many things have happened in my life. This ain't never happened. There was a table with people sitting next to him. Veronica noticed, this man keep watching us. And finally he tell his table, listen, I'm at the wrong table. Can I sit with y'all? <laughs> I'm at the wrong table. What is going on over up in here? <laughs> And my wife said, I'm, that's my husband who's a minister. These are his deacons and we're Christians. And he's like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And he just started talking with us. Say, man, this is incredible. And he, and next I know I'm like, is he going to go back to his table? He for real. He here for, he, he, he say, this is where we should be. Yeah. My God. My God, everywhere we go, people should do that. I see it. This is where we be. And then he realized, he didn't realize, he began to realize, we're the only blacks in the, up in there. Two, three hundred people. And he's like, y'all in here, like, y'all just, it don't matter. It don't. He said, yeah, because color don't matter. No, it don't. Not with God. And he even said, because we come from the same God. That's right. You know a little something. You're right. And then we thought that was it. He gets up and go back and sit down and we finally after a couple of hours decide to leave. <laughs> you know Christians, we don't know how to leave. Right, right. We, we don't. We don't even know how to go home. Because we just enjoy one another. So we don't know how to leave there. We don't know how to go home. So we get up and we start acting like we're making our way home. So we get up and walk and we get up to the door. He gets up again in front of everybody. <laughs> This time he goes all out. Come here, uh, sweetie. Let me show what the man did. Come here. So he goes like this. Turn around, to everybody. He goes and he's sitting here with his table. He goes. He telling his table. Wait a minute. Can I get a hug? <laughs> and then he turns. He wanted everybody to see me us hugging together. <laughs> he's standing there proud, like with his chest all out. <laughs> like how y'all like us now. <laughs> And so I say, well, you ain't said nothing but a word. Let's get back here. What's up, everybody? This is awesome. And, you know, and he just want to hug. He said, man, this is incredible. Only through Christ. Brother, sister, listen, when you are immovable, they will see the spirit of God in you. They will see it. You don't even have to speak it. They see it. We got to become a people that when people see us, they see God. Yeah. And you give God the glory.
That ain't all. We go outside. That's the second time. The third time we outside, he comes out. They still here. He goes, you know us. We don't know how to go home. We get to the car. We got to go ahead and do a whole nother good to see you. Glad to be together. And, we, we, and, and if we ever going to go home, I don't know, but what's up? Like we ain't seen each other all day. So we stand by the car and then dad say, and then all of a sudden dad start waving. I'm like, dad, what you waving at? Mark, there he go again. He, he trying to join us again. <laughs> You got to be kidding. This dude ready to back his car where we at. He want to back up. Man, but when you're with God, when you become immovable, God shines in your lives. You know how we can fill this place up? Just be immovable. Let God live in you. Let the world see who we are. Whether we're black or white, Jew or Gentile, it doesn't matter. We got God. Let them see God. And they will see his glory. And they shall come. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Amen.